Um, so thanks everybody for coming. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to preface this with uh, something. I just arrived on a flight from New Orleans this morning at 3 a.m. So if I pass out or appear a little bit comatose or something, please forgive me. Um, and then I had a, just, just before I got started, um, I wanted to get a little bit of an idea how many folks here are from the Faculty of Arts and Sciences, uh, Social Sciences, like I am, and how, are, how many people are coming from, say, a science or engineering kind of place. So uh, Arts and Social Sciences, raise hands. OK. Other people. OK, I get the idea. <laughs> All right. So um, this is, you know, I thought it's useful to sort of say who I am. Uh, I'm trained as an historian of, of modern Vietnam. Um, I've been here, uh, so for a long time I was directing a, a study abroad program, kind of a multidisciplinary thing uh, for the University of California in, in Vietnam. And then I just joined NUS last year. Um, starting about 2006 or so, I started to try to integrate different, you know, sort of kinds of technologies in my teaching um, for a variety of reasons. Um, you know, as, as uh, Prof. Jan was saying, you know, just, uh, you know, one of the first things I did was get on Facebook um, because that's where students were and that's how I could interact with them. Um, and that's proved an incredibly useful tool. Um, I've also, you know, from a very early point started making some, some websites as well for the, the students to put stuff up. And the reason that I, uh, you know, that I like to do, to do that is, you know, the opportunities it gives, it gives me to um, do sort of project-based learning, get students um, sharing things not just with me but with each other and with a broader public and stuff. This is a website that, um, that I did with my students. It's not displaying very well, but uh, sort of a two-year project in Vietnam where students were doing ethnographic work, uh, interviewing people about their, their, their work. Um, we did about 150 in interviews, put a lot of them up on the web. Um, in English and Vietnamese, um, and it actually does get some 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 publicity. Uh, some people are, are are seeing it. The Vietnamese site, especially, I keep getting these questions from Vietnamese people saying, "Oh, hey, I'd really like to work in your field. How can I work there?" So it, <laughs> um, people are, are are reading these things, if not in exactly the same way that um, I was hoping. At least you know, it addressed this this need of mine to sort of do things that were, were public, um, share, share with a broader public. Okay. So um, that point that I brought up about Vietnamese, Vietnamese people reading the website thinking it was basically a job search site uh, sort of, you know, is one of the reasons why uh, this last semester I decided to uh, start doing stuff on Wikipedia. Um, because, you know, I wanted to engage with a, have, have my students engaging with a broader public, but uh, in, in, a, in, <laughs> in the way I wanted them to, in a, in a sense. Um, so uh, this was a graduate level class, but I want to make a caveat here. It's sort of, in our department, our graduate level classes are a little bit interesting in that uh, a lot of the students in the classes are professional students. So they're not coming from a background in uh, Southeast Asian studies necessarily. And they also may not have quite the same motivation as, say, an upper level major student in the sense that a lot of the students are basically just there to, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're there uh, for, for a credential. They may not be there for personal interest in a way. And they're basically interested in just getting through the class, which, you know, my, my point there is to say that even though it's a graduate level class, in many ways it's not much different from a typical undergraduate level class. So one argument I'm making is that this stuff is completely applicable to undergra under level, undergraduate level classes. Um, so uh, yeah, these are some of the things that I, uh, you know, what inspired me, what I started reading about and uh, sort of how I got into, started to s develop my ideas about it. Um, these, these articles are, are kind of fun, and those webs, those links all work, uh, work if you um, want to check it out. Okay. Um, 
Now, before I went any further, though, I wanted to sort of talk a little bit more about Wikipedia and sort of do a poll of folks, which is also kind of an argument. Uh, you know, how many of us admit it? Uh, how many of us actually do use Wikipedia for stuff? Okay. Yes. Uh, sorry. You put your hand up, right? Yeah. What do you use it for? I see stuff in popular culture. So I find it very useful for keeping track of the publication dates, the manga, the guy, when, when TV shows were broadcast, and what panels they were on, and you know, the list of the people on the cover. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for manga, it's great, right? <laughs> Uh, that's a really interesting thing about Wikipedia is like, as you, you know, see, seeing what stuff is well covered, what stuff is not. I mean, there's, you know, manga or popular television shows or something, you know, it's just insane. Um, but, you know, I think, uh, does anybody have any other comments on, say, what's covered or, you know, the, the, the content of what you're seeing or the, the coverage? Is the content typically accurate, not accurate? Is the coverage good, not so good? Oh, any, any folks have some ideas? Richard, I know your name. Richard, say something. Um, I think it's accurate. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I think it's, uh, it's, it's variable, right? Um, depending on, on what you're looking at, sometimes it can be very good, and sometimes it can be pretty, pretty crap. Um, you know, and this, this article that I uh, cited earlier uh, by uh, uh, Rosenweig about um, using Wikipedia and sort of what it means for the practice of history, it's actually quite, quite interesting. He's looking at American history, and he actually does some, some very detailed comparisons of Wikipedia with some uh, scholarly sources. Um, the American uh, Encyclopedia of Biography, for example, which is about as good as it gets for American uh, historical figures, or Encarta. And he f in, in what he finds, actually, is that Wikipedia is, is, is actually quite good, better than Encarta and uh, almost as good as the American Encyclopedia of, of, uh, of, of, of Biography. So um, it, with American stuff, at least, uh, American history, it can be quite good. Uh, but in other areas, say Southeast Asian history, I think it can be quite spotty. And so I thought, well, this is, you know, this is interesting. Let's, let's see what we can do to uh, address some of that. And so, you know, uh, you know, this sort of brings me to my next question. I mean, basically, we all admitted to using it in one way or another. How many of us have actually contributed to it or edited stuff? Say, if you found an inaccuracy, and did you correct it? Did anyone? Has anyone contributed? What did you do? Nothing much, I'm afraid. Just uh, you know, um, typos, <laughs> grammar mistakes. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I appended my publications to relevant pages. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, we all have an interest in doing that, I suppose. Uh, anybody else make some contributions? Well, I found when I did that, actually, that people went back later and included quotes from things that I had published into the page. Uh -huh. Okay, well, this is really interesting. This is an argument that I hadn't anticipated, but an argument for doing stuff on Wikipedia, uh, you know, putting your own work in there, for example. Um, but the argument I was, I was going to make was, I mean, we all said we used it. We all noted that there's gaps in content and that there's often inaccuracies, but none of us do much about that. Um, so, you know, for me, I, you know, I think that should be sort of problematic to us. Um, and, you know, from my own standpoint, you know, Sometimes I find it very frustrating in that, you know, the stuff that I write, say about Vietnam or whatever, is really only available to a very small amount of people, people with access to scholarly databases. Um, whereas, you know, a lot of my colleagues in Vietnam, they don't have access to those databases. A lot of my students, after they get, graduate, don't have access. And they're like, well, you know, we want to read what you're writing, but uh, we can't do that. Um, and not just about what I'm writing, but, you know, bringing basically the you know, the, the state of the academic field uh, to a broader audience, I think, is, is a responsibility we have. 
And so this was one of the primary reasons why I, I, I did this. I think it's something, it's, it's important, right? And particularly when you get students, you know, you get a bunch of students basically doing the grunt work for you uh, to bring the scholarly state of the field to a broader audience, um, you can actually have an impact rather than just doing it yourself. So that's the, the poll that was an argument. Okay, so uh, if anybody's interested in seeing the syllabus, uh, just send me an email, I'll be happy to share it with you. But um, this, was, uh, this was it. I just said, you know, the, the classes on revolt and revolution very broadly defined, basically including labor movements, peace movements, I, anything students were interested in. Students could, you know, pick their own topic and uh, basically run with it. Um, I divided the class into two parts. Uh, the first part was um, uh, where the students had to do two book reviews. I encouraged them to do book reviews on you know, the topic that they were eventually going to uh, be, be writing about for Wikipedia. Um, but I thought this was also a, a, a means of, um, you know, again, engaging with a broader, a broader audience. And we'll, we'll look at that in a second. So it prepared students, but also because they had to do these book reviews and upload them to Google Books or Goodreads, um, again, sort of getting the, the, the fruits of their labors out to a broader audience. Um, that was sort of part, part two. Sorry, part one. Uh, and then part two, that was the Wikipedia sort of stage where, uh, you know, after having prepared in the first half, they got down to business in the second half. And, um, yeah, they could either choose to modify an existing page or to create their own. About two-thirds created their own, one-third modified existing pages. Um, and then, you know, each... Each step of this, whether the uh, each book review or the Wikipedia project, um, I tried to have sort of multiple steps in a process along the way. Uh, choosing a topic, doing an outline, uh, doing a draft, having that reviewed by me and or peers, um, and then you know having time to uh, review and, and redraft before putting up the final version on on either. Uh, Google, Google Books or, um, or Wikipedia. And then uh, the last thing that I wanted to point out was that, um, you know, although in this class students did all the work individually, I think it could be uh, quite easily and, and maybe profitably done as, as kind of a group project. You know, if you wanted to focus on a particular topic, uh, get people working on different aspects of a larger subject, um, that would be totally cool too. So, um, did anyone have any questions about this sort of part, the design stuff? Okay. Like I said, if anybody's interested, happy to share that syllabus with you. Okay. Um, the book review part, part one. Um, yeah, I think it was a useful preparation for the Wikipedia stuff. Uh, usually, although sometimes students ended up basically saying, oh, I actually don't like that topic, it's kind of boring, and switching completely to something completely different. And, you know, people did that, were able to still do the work. Uh, so, but in general, you know, I really encourage the students to see it as, you know, part of gaining uh, sort of a broader knowledge of their topic before they try to summarize it, synthesize it in the Wikipedia uh, section. You know, it was, uh, the book reviews are, are, are pretty challenging. And this sort of brings me to my next point is, you know, I, I hadn't realized what a, or I hadn't really thought what, what a challenge it would be to do good book reviews. So it actually ended up being, uh, you know, having, I had to sort of make the students work harder on this than I, than I originally thought it would be. And so, you know, I would also say that even if you don't do the Wikipedia stuff, these book reviews, could be a really interesting part of a class, even just 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 one book review, or maybe making uh, you know book reviews a, a centerpiece or a major part of a of a of a class. I think this could you know be really profitably or usefully integrated into different classes. Um, but you know it's you know these are some of the things that students found really challenging. You know helping students to figure out what what is you know really the crux of an argument of a of a book. That's not. You know, that's a, a skill that takes some time to, to, to develop. 
context was a big thing, you know, be, to, to, to understand, you know, the, the significance of a book, you have to place it in its broader scholarly context. You have to know where the author's coming from. And again, that's, you know, that's stuff that students aren't immediately gonna, gonna have. You really have to help them with that. Um, and then the other thing that was kind of interesting was length. Uh, and this, I kept telling students, you know, I have to do this when I'm writing a book review myself. You know, you usually have, say, a thousand word uh, limit, and it's damn hard trying to squeeze it into a thousand words. I think Google Books reviews are maxed out at 699 words or something, 700 words. It's quite short. Um, and so one way we got around that was, you know, I, eventually I allowed, I allowed students to write reviews up to 1,200 words. Um, and the way we got around that was, uh, Goodreads will link to Google Books, um, and Goodreads doesn't have length limitations. So students would upload it to Goodreads, and then bang, it links to uh, to Google Books. And so you can see that. You know, an example of a of a good one is, oops, yep. It's a graduate 5,000 level class, but I think it could work as a, uh, uh, I think it, uh, well, this, review, this is getting all screwy. Oh. Okay, that is, see this, this is also a good example shows you how technically uh, illiterate I am. Uh, anyone can do this, uh, if, even if, uh, anyone can just do a class like this, even if they can't get the screen to display because it's interacting in a weird way with this. Um, any suggestions? Click the green button. Okay, there we go. Cool. All right. So uh, this was a, for any of you f familiar with uh, Southeast Asian Studies, Moral Economy of the Peasant by James Scott is a sort of a classic uh, book. And when we went up there, um, you know, initially, all you, let's, let's see what the five reviews look like. Um, See, most of the reviews are, are things like this, you know. Uh, intensely dry and not a fun read, but it was definitely educational. Uh, you know, another one sentence review. Uh, okay. So, um, anyway, so, you know, this is sort of what got me interested in this. It's like, this is one of the huge books of, uh, of, uh, Southeast Asian studies, and you know, all you have, available to a normal audience are these crappy reviews, basically. Um, but now we have Brian's review, which is, is excellent. Um, he's one of our best, best students in the, in the, in the, whoa, ah. um, best students in, in, in it, you know, and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a review that could go nicely in almost, you know, any journal, really. It, he's, it's, it's that good. And so basically this is, this is my argument that, you know, now thanks to this review, um, you know, the uh, basically scholarly level book reviews are available to a wider, a wider audience, right? So, um, so all that to say, I think the book review part is cool and worth integrating if you can do it. Um, so. Now, this, uh, so that's a book review stuff. Now let's talk about the Wikipedia stuff, uh, which was really, I think, for me, super interesting. Um, you know, it really was a, such a, you know, immediate way to get the students, you know, focus on writing clearly, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's really fun. I mean, there, you know, there's all sorts of, you know, Wikipedia has all sorts of guide, guidelines, uh, which are actually good basic guidelines for, for, for how to write and stuff. So, in a sense, it's not coming from me. 
It's set and it's now, you know, it's, 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 now it's coming from, it's coming from Wikipedia. They better, you know, they better listen, right? And in a sense, uh, if they don't do a good job, it won't just be edited by me eventually. It'll be edited by, edited by folks on Wikipedia. So it's a neat way of sort of decentering me in the class, um, but still getting them, you know, uh, to, to, um, you know, sort of, uh, you know, write up to the kinds of standards that, that I would want them to write to, right? So, Clear writing, clear organization. Students really start to understand uh, the importance of citations and sources, right? Um, and uh, you know, it's it's basically it's, there's some really important things that students learn by doing this. And again, with me sort of decentered in the process, now it's coming from Wikipedia, and which and and you know they're being held to this standard publicly, right? Then the other thing that I thought was really fun, I didn't realize how fun it would be uh, initially, was this, this you know, the, 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 the ideal, the, one of the, the highest ideals of Wikipedia is this neutral point of view, the NPOV, right? This idea that you're supposed to be, you know, not biased in, in writing a Wikipedia thing, right? Uh, and so this is... Actually, a, typically a different way than we usually write in the humanities. The students, I'm not asking them, Wikipedia is not asking you to make an argument. It's not asking you to use uh, primary sources. It is rather just asking you to do a supposedly neutral sort of state of the field look at a particular topic, right? So on one level, it's, it's, it's really good. It's related in a way to the kind of work that they're doing when they did the book reviews in that they got a, you know, sort of, Find out what the main sources on a particular topic are. Synthesize the kind of that all the information into this sort of meta story. Uh, if there are controversies or disputes within the field, identify them, uh, contextualize them, present them, but not take a side. Things like that. And you know, even though it's again not what we typically the kind of writing we typically do in humanities, it's still a very important ski, uh, skill, right? Uh, and perhaps in some ways more important than the sort of argument thing that we, we always focus on in humanities. So on one level, this neutral point of view is a, is a, is a cool thing to, 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 to work with, to, to sort of getting the students, you know, to do, doing these kinds of synthesis, understanding arguments, putting it all together, stuff like that. But then what was really interesting to me is, is how you could really get the students to understand that this is completely false, that this neutral point of view is, is impossible to achieve. And, you know, this became very obvious from a very early point when students had to start making decisions about when do I start a story, you know, when do I end it, what do I include, what do I not include. And these are, you know, it's, these are tough choices and the students are having to make them themselves. And it's, it was really interesting, you know. Uh, the example I've got, maybe the most obvious example was um, this one. Uh, this is a student web uh, entry on the Hukbalahap re Rebellion, a major sort of movement in, uh, in the Philippines. And um, so this... Um, it was really interesting. The student was actually from the Philippines, and we had to go through this process of figuring out where is she going to start the story. Because if she starts a story in the, uh, you know, uh, basically there's there's two main places to start the story. One would be in the early or late 1800s, early 1900s, with resistance movements uh, or independence movements against American occupation. Right, coming out of a, a, a peasant kind of background, indigenous kind of traditions of resistance um, that even go back into the you know, Spanish era, for example. So, do you start the story? Do you start the story there, and say that it's about these sort of peasant movements, or do you start it in the 1930s and say it's about communism? Right, and so you know, she had to figure out where she was gonna where she was gonna start it. Um, and uh, that was that was interesting, and in a sense, all the students had to go through that sort of a process, right? Um, and that you know, the where to start and where to end is the most obvious one. But you know, I think all the students sort of began to understand um, that 
despite this claim of objectivity, you know, how they structure this entry is, is a very, uh, there's a lot of responsibility in it. And it completely changes, uh, potentially completely changes the outcome. Okay. So. These are some of the challenges we face. One, um, Wikipedia is a clunky interface. It's not super easy. It's, uh, you know, uh, Google is way, way, way nicer. Uh, so a big challenge was, you know, there, something I didn't understand early, uh, before was you got to get the students working on Wikipedia early um, because it takes some time to familiarize with it. And if I have one piece of advice for anyone considering doing this, it's uh, cut and paste. Basically, you go to another Wikipedia page, uh, you go to the edit page, and if, if you see something you like with an image or whatever, you cut that with all the little commands and you paste it into your own, and then you put your own content in between the commands. So cut and paste. Um, that's the one big, big of advice, most important piece of advice for dealing with Wikipedia. Um, in the class itself, I sort of wonder whether I gave them too much too much freedom. That was that was a problem getting students to focus down on a subject quick enough, uh, and then also uh, potentially some students I think didn't didn't push themselves as much as others, and maybe didn't take the kind of challenging, uh, relevant kind of uh, topics that they might have done. Uh, there's the eternal challenge of peer review. Um, some students. Took it very seriously, some, some didn't. And then, uh, was it too much work? Potentially, it was, a, it was a lot of work. The students had to work pretty hard. Um, I might, you know, try and, uh, reduce some of that workload. But, you know, despite those challenges, I think we had some real successes. Um, you know, all of our work had a, a context and a public. Um, we made a genuine contribution to improving the, quality and coverage of popular resources like Google, uh, Google Books and Wikipedia. Uh, we wrote and we got creative. Uh, we got involved in controversy. We changed history. Uh, people actually read it and we did projects that were meaningful, meaningful to us and, and maybe meaningful to society. Now these are pretty grand claims, um, but I'll just, in the remaining two minutes and 20 seconds I've got, I'll try and exp show you uh, why I say that. Okay, um, so this one, uh, Preman, Indonesian Gangsters. Great page by, uh, not, you know, by an undergraduate student, not one of our strongest students, um, but she went crazy, way surpassing the, uh, the, um, uh, the suggested limit of 3,000 words. It's about 5,000 words. Uh, it's great. It's got etymology. It's got major, uh, major people and uh, major, major Indonesian gangsters, pre-colonial history, colonial history, rebellion, and stuff. It's awesome. The student was super creative, went, you know, way beyond, uh, the call of duty. Um, so students can get really inspired by this. First point. Um, second, uh, controversy. Siamese Re Revolution of 1932. Uh, the, our student tried to pre present a more sort of balanced take uh, on the revolution of 1932, including the role of the monarchy in that. Um, and then eventually, uh, quite quite rapidly, uh, was was uh, blocked from accessing the web page and had his edits uh, sort of implicating or sort of talking about the role of the monarchy removed. Okay, so we're dealing with genuine controversies here. Um, it's, it's fun. Um, Rohingya conflict in Western Burma. This is one of our more successful things. I mean, this is something that's happening as we're speaking. This got thousands of hits within the first month of being up. Um, got um, picked by, uh, uh, by Wikipedia as a high priority site. Um, and in some ways uh, has like I said, sort of changed history. There's, um, our, the guy who, who did this page also edited the basic Rohingya people's page, which for years it had, uh, incorrect information about the population of Rohingyas in, in Arakan, putting it at two million. So typically this was the number, the population number that was 
given in news reports. You'd see people referring to it, you know, using this number in, 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 in TV, things like that. Um, it's false. The census puts it at a little over 800,000. He corrected that, and since he corrected it, you've seen the new figure, the accurate figure, start to show up in media reports. Um, so we change history. Um, and then uh, I see some people sniggering here. Um, so, you know, uh, this is my uh, uh, sort of activist uh, Singaporean student um, who wanted to talk about Operation Spectrum. Um, you know, again, this is something that she was she felt quite deeply about. Uh, and, uh, you know, in a sense, she is contributing to the creation of public memory, right? Wikipedia is essentially where, you know, in a sense, history and memory is being created. And so, you know, she and, and her peers were, are sort of engaging in this creation of, of history. So, um, yeah, I think it was, uh, you know, for me, quite an, an inspiring thing. Um, this is a, you know, this is a list of all the websites that our students did. Um, and I guess, you know, again, our time is up. But, uh, you know, maybe over lunch or whatever, I'd love to hear your, guy, your guys' ideas about how to improve it. Um, and then, you know, the other thing is, I, I do think, you know, although I'm an historian, I was dealing with, with, with history, I do think in the humanities, or maybe even in the sciences, a lot of these, you know, we, we could actually be doing this sort of work. And so this is my challenge to you guys, is to think about how we could you know, uh, fulfill what I argue is, is our responsibility to engage in, in things like, you know, Google Books and Wikipedia, um, through our classes. So, uh, thank you so much for your time and I hope to talk to you soon.